Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another cooking demo here at the Lebanon Senior Center. I just wanted to give a shout out to our volunteer, Cindy. Um, she is getting ready to do a big move across the country, and we just wanted to send her a lot of love. Um, this is a favorite soup of hers, and uh, I've been making it for her for a, a little while now on occasion to bribe her, okay, to say thank you for everything that she has done for us here at the Lebanon Senior Center. Um, she is our big um, go-to gal when it has come to our movies on Fridays. She's always here to set up and take care of folks who come into the movies. So we are gonna really miss you, Cindy. And uh, this soup is for you. All right, so what I've already done ahead of time, I went ahead and I sauteed some onion. Um, if you are a super lover of onion and you've got a you know, medium sized to small head uh, of onion, you can certainly chop the whole thing up or half of a big head of onion. Works great. You saute it up, throw it in your pot. Today I'm going to be throwing it in the slow cooker. You can certainly cook this on a stove in your favorite stock pot um, or do it in the slow cooker. Totally up to you or um, if you've got an instant pot. You get to cook your, pick your cooking method, follow the, you know, general directions for soup preparation with that cooking method. So the sautéed onions are already in our crock pot along with um, about eight cups of um, chicken stock. If you are, do not want to use chicken, you can certainly find a vegetable stock as well. I just like the flavor of the chicken stock. Um, we are also going to be tossing in um, or we already tossed in uh, some fire roasted tomatoes as well. It is tomato season. So you are certainly welcome to roast up some of your own tomatoes from the garden and toss them in. What's the difference between fire roasted tomato and just a regular diced tomato? Talk about the you know roasting process of tomato. It gives it that little bit of char, a little bit of smokiness to the skin. Just a nice addition to the soup. You know, you can certainly use a regular tomato or regular diced up tomatoes as well. All right, there was a little bit of oopsie. I went ahead and edited the video a little wrong. Um, I did just put in um, about a cup, cup and a half worth of leftover rotisserie chicken. That's in the crock pot as well. I just forgot to hit record when I did that. So you just have to imagine what it looks like to put that chicken in our little pot over here. So moving on, so once the chicken goes in, um, again, it could be leftover rotisserie chicken, a leftover chicken of any kind you like. I mean, if it's, you're not, not going to want to use a saucy chicken, woohoo, saucy chicken. Um, if you've got canned chicken, leftover rotisserie chicken, um, you can take the coating off of fried chicken, whatever chicken you've got left over, or if you want to cook up a little extra piece of two, um, just for this, you're welcome to. Again, if you are avoiding animal products, you can certainly leave out the chicken altogether. Um, let's see here, we're gonna move on here. So we've got a can of rinsed black beans. We're gonna pop those right in there. If you like all the effort of using dry beans, you can certainly do use those instead. Again, we've got a can of Whole kernel corn. You can certainly use fresh corn. It's starting to come on um, and you can get your hands on some of that. If you do really like those smoky flavors, you can certainly do an addition of a roasted corn as well. All right, let's get some things where we might actually have to measure some things and let's grab some garlic. I'm a big garlic fiend. I love me some garlic. So you can certainly add more if you like, but I'm going to pop in a tablespoon of garlic in there because it's good. It's good for you. All right. If you want to avoid the uh, work of having to roll out a line and cut a line, you can get one of these little squeezable ones. We're going to add about a teaspoon of lime juice in here. Just adds a little brightness and acidity. The tomatoes definitely have some acidity, some different tone for the lime. Um, a lot of Latin foods, you know, do a hint of lime in them. So it's just a yummy thing to add. We'll put on that side. Um, some other things that you can add in. 
Um, you can chop up a bell pepper, toss a bell pepper in there if you would like. You can, this is a great time to use whatever's left at the end of a jar of salsa. Um, this one's not quite the end. And oh, you get to finally watch me open it on camera. That is really cute, Rebecca. Should have thought about doing that earlier. There we go. Um, you can pour a little bit of that in there. Again, it just adds some of the flavors. You'll get some of the chilies and things without having to deal with um, cutting up chili. You can add a lovely, you know, bit of jalapeno or your favorite pepper if you do like heat um, or any of your hot sauces if you want to add some heat to your soup. Um, and I don't just mean temperature heat, I mean spicy heat. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, you can certainly add a dash of cumin or chili powder. Um, I actually have a friend that she skips all the measuring of spices and she just tosses a packet of taco seasoning, um, no, no, low sodium taco seasoning into her soup, into her version. Comes out pretty well, kind of reminds me of a taco soup, it's just missing the hamburger. Um, so this, you can definitely do that with the soup and do a variation as well. Two and four, take out the chicken and put in some um, ground beef and fried up, cooked up ground beef instead and add that taco packet and all of a sudden it starts becoming taco soup instead of chicken tortilla soup. So that does about all we need to add in there for right now. We've got our stock, our tomatoes, our corn, we've got our black beans, we've got our chicken, we've got our lime juice, we've got a little bit of salsa for intrigue and that onion is in there as well. So it's looking really good and really yummy. We get this stirred on. Since I'm doing it in a crock pot, I'm gonna put the lid on. Um, actually, I'll just do that right now. I have to plug it in. The cord wouldn't reach all the way over here, so currently it's just hanging out on the table, looking fun and delicious without any application of heat. So we will get that going as soon as I'm recording. And we'll do the magic of television swap out later, and I'll share a picture of what it looks like when it's done. Before we do that, though, I did want to talk about some of the toppings. One of the fun things about chicken tortilla soup is the toppings. Um, so if you enjoy some fresh cilantro, we do. We are going to be uh, nipping off, chopping up some of this fresh cilantro to put on the soup after it's done cooking. You do not want to put it on at the beginning because it's going to turn into brown, black, wilted, um, not so pretty and it'll lose some of its flavor, little tidbits. If you wait till the end because it's uh, fresh herbs and more delicate, you want to finish with them. So wait till it's done cooking and then sprinkle some on the top. And if you've got people that don't like cilantro, you can always just sprinkle it on individual bowls versus adding it to the whole pot of soup. We also, I like to use um, some shredded cheese and I like to have sour cream or guacamole available. Just plays up with the flavors. Um, and then if you uh, have a bag of, you know, tortilla chips that, you know, it's getting down the bottom of the bag where it's all just crunched up and you, you know, don't just throw them out. It's great to use for this soup to sprinkle on top. It's like a, a different take on a crouton. But you can also find these tortilla strips these are fun because they come in different colors and you can uh, open a bag of those for folks to sprinkle on the top of their soup. Um, it creates a beautiful bowl of soup. And so again, quick and easy recipe. Fall's coming, weather's changing, so this might be a delicious soup that you could make for yourself. If you wanna make it to yourself, um, you can look in the uh, recipe below and just cut those ingredients in half or in a quarter. Um, to kind of a set volume you want to do. This makes quite a bit of soup for one person. So if you are having friends over or going to an event where you'd like to take something, this could be the size you need for that. For an individual, you definitely want to go in half or even in a quarter. Um, you'll have a little bit of leftovers, but you're not going to be swimming in soup for the whole week. All right, everyone, I'll share it when it's done. Thanks for joining us for the cooking demo today. Recipe is going to be below in the comments. We love you. Take care of yourself. And as the weather changes, 
Uh, hopefully we'll be sharing a pot of soup with you soon. Bye-bye.